Senator Booker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, gentlemen, for being here, and I appreciate your service to our country. Um, Secretary Mattis, uh, right now in, in Niger, it's becoming a pretty significant beneficiary of a lot of DOD activity, a lot of DOD funding uh, under the train and equip, uh, global train and equip program. Uh, to my understanding, there's a new Air Force facility in Agadez amounting to hundreds of millions of dollars. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Um, and um, we're seeing uh, a lot of talk now about uh, continued military operations in the region, continued investment of U.S. troops as well as uh, resources. Is that correct? Senator, we've been operating in Niger in the Sran area but for about a little over 20 years now. Yes, sir. But, there's, but what I, my point is that there's been a significant increase of recent. Uh, there has been recently as we watch, as we try to build them up to take care of their own security. And at the same time, we're seeing that uh, at least a proposed budget from the administration for food peace programs uh, used to total about $33.8 million. The proposed budget is now being cut to $1.6 million for, for um, all bilateral aid to Niger. Is that correct, sir, to your knowledge? I'm going to have to go back and look at the figure. Uh, th those figures are correct, so um, in the proposed budget. Um, so in other words, a massive ratcheting up of our military operations, uh, at, uh, a proposed decrease. Now, I, I bring that up to you really because, um, and, I, and, I, and I think I've heard you talk to this, but I'd like for you to speak to it now. Um, you know, we're seeing uh, in a lot of these states we're involved in Africa very different uh, conditions often than we've seen in other places where we've been involved in uh, 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 training and equip programs or, or fighting in the sense of what's, what's happening with a lot of, in a lot of these countries. Let's turn to Nigeria for a second. Uh, Nigerian military forces have conducted uh, significant um, uh, crimes, I would say, a massacres of Shia Muslims in the northeast town of Zaria, in which over 350 people were killed. A Nigerian Air Force bombed and displaced persons, uh, a displaced persons camp, killing 236 refugees, uh, uh, include, and injuring thousands more. In 2014, the military was accused of over 600 uh, unarmed detainees, of killings over 600 unarmed detainees, uh, and interning them in mass graves. Uh, there has been very little progress or accountability for these incidents. Um, and, and I guess I say to this because we seem to be involved in. Uh, in, in, in places like Nigeria, and you know that as we decrease efforts in stabilizing democracies, helping with food aid, creating an environment where there's stability, and we are involved in partnering with militaries that are responsible for atrocities, that that creates an environment for more terrorism. Or do you disagree with my, that statement, Secretary Mass? Senator, what we try to do is maintain our diplomatic engagement, our development support, at the same time provide sufficient security, which is by training them how to do their own security, behind which the development can occur to remove the root causes. Anywhere Secretary you Master. see U.S. troops, Senator, you will find them schooling local troops, part of our training, is the law of armed conflict, is military ethics. Uh, we're the good guys in trying to get this across. I, I, I don't take issue with that at all. I, what I take issue with uh, is that you're saying we try to maintain our efforts at diplomacy and, and food support because that's not reflected in budget numbers. Let me just continue to the point I was trying to make. That there's a lot of extensive research, which I'm sure you're aware, that in addition to socioeconomic status, um, excessive force, by police and military forces engenders deep grievances that lead to radicalization. And the heavy-handed responses from military uh, drives recruitment and violent extremism uh, in organizations that often then lead to terrorist activity. You're aware of that research? I'm not aware of what we'd done in May of 2014 when 276 Nigerian girls were kidnapped. I, I, I don't find the connection uh, between our activities and Boko Haram's kidnapping of hundreds of girls. I, 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 wasn't, making, I wasn't making that connection, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm simply making the point, uh, as Senator Paul made within <clears throat> Yemen, for example, 
uh, that we're, when we're engaged in counterterrorism activities, partnering with military operations like we're seeing in, with Saudi Arabia, like we're seeing with the Nigerian forces, and they're conducting uh, operations in a way in which civilians are killed, yeah. in which atrocities are accomplished, that in your opinion, does that in any way often drive the creation uh, or the or the condition right. for radicalization. I, I understand, Shane. It certainly could. I, I assure you what we're trying to do is to keep that from happening, those very things. And in this case, the United Nations recognized government in Yemen uh, is fighting inside a civil war there to try to restore that government. And if we don't get it restored, then that will set the conditions for the very kind of... Uh, growth of, of terrorist groups that you've mentioned. Um, in Somalia, uh, the um, language of your current notification of June 27th says the United States forces also advise assist and now accompany regional forces. Um, is that a change that, that means that we could be accompanying uh, regional forces, means a potential combat role for troops in Somalia? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, however, our our mission there is still to train and advise and assist them by accompanying them how to carry out their own uh, security. We're not taking over the fighting from the Somali or the Africom, uh, 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 Africa Union forces, AU forces. So I, I've run out of time. I, I just want to say there's a whole bunch of more questions on uh, a lot of the activities in Africa that I, I would love to get answers to, Mr. Chairman. I will also say that it strains my understanding of what an authorization of use of military force. I don't want to tell you what I was doing 16 years ago, um, but uh, um, but it really strains to me. I'm sure we don't want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> it strains to me that this idea that somehow that authorization is being used. I don't care if it's Indonesia where there's a, a, a terrorist activity in the Philippines, uh, Niger, Somalia. I can go through that, that, that we're still relying for all these activities. There's been no objective, in my opinion, a conversation had enough to see if we're really achieving U.S. aims or engaging in a way uh, that is uh, making this world uh, uh, a much more complex place. And I, I really do agree with a lot of my colleagues that we should be having this debate uh, openly and more in Congress. Thank you so much. Senator Brasso. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Secretary Mattis, as we were discussing, you've just gotten back from Korea. The